We all know that the Earth was formed 4.6 billion years ago along with the other planetary objects in our solar system. But this brings us to the next question. Is the face of the Earth from its formation still the same as of today? Is the current features of the Earth now the same with the features of it 4.6 billion years ago? Good day and welcome to Exploring Science. As we have observed with our history lessons, the Earth has been changing constantly. The ancient Earth's features may not show off the same features as of the modern Earth that we know of because of this constant change. How did the scientists come to know about these changes through time? What were the bases to say so? All these observations lie on the hands of many experts geologists, petrologists, stratigraphers, and paleontologists. They studied the composition of the earth, investigated rocks and minerals, stratification or layers of rocks and fossil remains of ancient biotic and abiotic materials. How exactly was the earth during the ancient times? What has been the different events that took place before the modern earth? How do you describe the earth's domination through time? Well, we can look at it through the geologic time scale. But what is it? According to Wikipedia, the geologic timescale is a system of chronological dating that classifies geological strata in time. It is used by geologists, paleontologists, and other earth scientists to describe the timing and relationships of events in geologic history. This simply means that the geologic timescale is the calendar for the events in, her in earth history. This calendar of events subdivides all time into named units of abstract time called in descending order of duration, eons, eras, periods, epochs, and ages. Now, we will explore all of this one by one. Major volcanic events altering the Earth's environment and causing extinctions may have occurred 10 times in the past 3 billion years. This is where the first time scale goes in. The Precambrian includes approximately 90% of geologic time. It extends 4.6 billion years ago to the beginning of Cambrian period. It also includes three eons, the Hadean Eon, Archean Eon, and Protozoic Eon. The first one is the Hadean Eon. This time represents the Earth's earliest history during which the planet was characterized by a partially molten surface, volcanism, and asteroid impacts. The Hadean Eon is characterized by Earth's initial formation, from the accretion of dust and gases and the frequent collisions of larger planetesimals, and by the stabilization of its core and crust and the development, of course, of its atmosphere and oceans. Throughout the part of this eon, impacts from extraterrestrial bodies release enormous amounts of heat that likely prevented much of the rock from solidifying at the surface. As much, the name of the interval is a reference to Hades, a Greek translation of the Hebrew word for hell. The Earth is continually bombarded by meteorites and the mantle causes severe volcanism. However, ocean and atmosphere were formed during this time. The Hadean era, or era lasted about 700 million years. From around 4.5 billion years ago to around 3.8 billion years ago. As you might imagine, no life could have survived in the Hadean era. The Hadean Eon was a violent time in Earth's geologic history. 
But in the Archean Eon, Earth finally starts to cool down with a more stable climate. Earth began cooling in the Archean Eon, and because it was cool enough, water could finally condense to form its first oceans. This was in a large part because the moon stabilized the Earth's climate, giving it seasons. In this eon, Earth's atmosphere was mostly methane and nitrogen. It was early in the Archean that life first appeared on Earth. Our oldest fossils date to roughly 3.5 billion years ago and consist of bacteria microfossils. In fact, all life during the more than 1 billion years of the Archean was bacterial. The only life forms that could exist were anaerobic cyanobacteria or blue-green algae. This happened from 3.8 to 2.5 billion years ago. In the Archean Eon, oxygen filled in the atmosphere, and, the, and most of the world's iron ore was deposited. Because the Earth's conditions stabilized, eukaryotic and multicellular life could finally emerge in the Proterozoic Eon. This is the last eon from the Precambrian timeline, the Proterozoic Eon. The Proterozoic covers the time from the appearance of oxygen in Earth's atmosphere to just before the proliferation of complex life, such as trilobites or corals on the Earth. The name Proterozoic combines two forms of ultimately Greek origin, Protero meaning former or earlier, and Zoic which means life. During the Proterozoic Eon, modern plate tectonics became active and and the ancient course of the continents moved over wide areas of the globe, accumulating smaller fragments of crust and sometimes colliding with other large land masses. The opposite also happened, leading to continental rifting. There is also evidence that eukaryotes and multicellular organisms appeared at Earth. Cyanobacteria, photosynthetic organisms that produce oxygen as a byproduct had first appeared 3.5 billion years ago, but became common and widespread in the Proterozoic. The Proterozoic Eon extended from 2,500 million years to 541 million years ago. Therefore, it lasted about 2 billion years. The Phanerozoic Eon is the current eon in the geologic time scale, and the one during which abundant animal and plant life has existed. It covers roughly 541 million years. During this period, continents drifted about, eventually collected into a single landmass known as Pangaea, and then split up into current continental landmasses. It is divided into three eras, the, Pal the Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic. Most of biological evolution occurred during this time period. This began with the Cambrian period when animals first developed hard shells preserved in the fossil record. The Paleozoic era started with the Cambrian period, which extended from 541 million years ago to 485 million years ago. It marked a dramatic burst of evolutionary changes in life on Earth, known as the Cambrian Explosion. The scale of the Cambrian Explosion is likely exaggerated due to the proliferation of hard-bodied animals that fossilize much more readily than their soft-bodied precursors. These included brachiopods, which lived in shells resembling those of clams or cockles, and animals which with jointed external skeletons known as anthropods or arthropods, the ancestors of insects, spiders, and crustaceans. The Cambrian explosion saw an incredible diversity of life emerge, including many major animal groups that is alive today. Among them were the chordates, to which vertebrates which are animals with backbones belong. The end of the Cambrian period is marked by evidence in the fossil record of a mass extinction event which happened about 485 million years ago. 
Now we go back again to the Paleozoic era, which is the major interval of geologic time that began 541 million years ago with the Cambrian explosion, an extraordinary diversification of marine animals and ended about 252 million years ago with the, end, with the end Permian extinction, the greatest extinction event in Earth's history. Long before dinosaurs, our planet was populated with plants and animals that were mostly obliterated after a series of massive volcanic eruptions in Siberia. During this era, invertebrate animals diversified in the oceans. Plants, amphibians, and reptiles also moved to the land. The evolution of plants from some group of green algae during the Ordovician is another. Since these plants move from water onto land, paving the way for vertebrate animals to follow. Next, we have the Mesozoic Era that began from 251 to 65 billion years ago. This era concludes the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous period. It began with the supercontinent Pangaea. Then, during the era, Pangaea broke up and continents drifted apart. The, boom, the movement of continents changed climates. It also caused tremendous volcanic activity. It is known as the age of reptiles. The appearance of the first birds and mammals, flowing plants, and it is known also as the age of dinosaurs. In this era, the significant increase of dinosaur population in the Jurassic period was seen and the mass extinction of dinosaur in the Cretaceous period happened. It ended with the massive meteorite impact that caused a mass extinction, wiping out the dinosaurs and up to 80% of life on Earth. Lastly, we have the Cenozoic Era, which is the current geologic era that began 65 million years ago and also called the Age of Mammals. During the Cenozoic era, the continents moved to their present positions and Earth's climate became cooler and drier. These changes had a major impact on the evolution of life during the era. Mammals became the dominant life form and underwent many changes. The first hominids also appeared in the Miocene Epoch and the modern humans appeared in the Pleistocene Epoch. These are just some of the many events that happened within the 4.6 billion years that the Earth and the solar system were formed. The main reason why the geological time scale is so important is that it takes the Earth and strips it down into pieces until it gets to the very bottom or the very beginning of time and then it uses great detail to describe to us the increase and decrease of organisms and other Earth's new species and early conditions of the ancient Earth to now. It presents, of course, the correct sequence of events in the Earth's history. A lot can still happen in the future. And we are just living in the 1% of the whole lifespan of the Earth. Therefore, we are also part of this history, even though we are just in the 1%. And we're also unsure what the future holds for all of us, or for all of the species here on Earth. Thank you, and stay safe, be smart. This is Exploring Science.